caught my husband and best friend. The other night, I chanced to walk in on my best friend and her husband at their home. For a few months, I had my misgivings, and every time I voiced them, I was treated as if they were unfounded. As a result, my mental health worsened tremendously. For the preceding two weeks, this was all I could think about and contemplate. In order to protect my attorney's interests, which isn't really necessary, considering that neither of us uses Reddit and that this account may theoretically be linked to me and that this is being viewed as a no-fault case, I'm being intentionally vague. After barely a year of marriage, we'd been together for more than four years before getting married. My ex, best friend filed for divorce from her husband a few months ago, and as an incredible friend, I made her my first priority. I didn't want her to be alone, so I took her into my life, and then into our lives together as well. We even moved into a bigger room so that the three of us could feel like we were in our own place. After all, she had been my best friend for almost a decade and a half, and I had never expected this to happen to her. I trusted her more than anything else in the world, and she rammed it up my in the most horrific way she could think of to do it. I'm at a loss on how to cope with this treachery. I'm completely speechless. Even though I have a great future ahead of me, it doesn't seem to be nearly enough. The fact that I'm waking up alone in the morning and having reality hit me is like being smacked in the face all over again is still very fresh in my mind. What kind of person would do such a thing to me? What exactly am I meant to accomplish at this point? I'll be back in a few hours to reply to any more questions or concerns. Thank you so much for all of your help and for helping me feel less alone in this situation. For the time being, I just don't have the emotional stamina to continue dealing with this issue. Second edit, I was taken aback by the overwhelming response to this essay. Thank you so much for your kind words, wisdom, shared experiences and love. I really appreciate it. There aren't enough words to express how important this was. If I haven't answered to more situation-specific queries at this point, it's because it doesn't really matter. What's done is done, and I'm well aware that continuing to relive the events of that particular night is detrimental to my health and well-being, and the weeks before in which I was gaslit and suffered in silence. As for the next few days, I'm doing all I can to just live, and I put up a plan to get my back in action by Thursday, since I simply cannot afford to miss any more time for my work. I'm just scraping by, but I'm certain I'll be okay in the end. At this point, the only thing I can do is continue to breathe, as well as allowing for the passage of time. Story 2 My 42F best friend 42F told my husband 4-4M, I cheated, and he's leaving. The apparent is that I deserve this, that I am the villain, and that everything is my fault. I get what you're saying, but I'm not sure I'll be able to pull it off. I'm writing in the hopes of receiving any advice on how to win back a deluded spouse from the devil's advocate. I was young and dumb in 2001, yes, 20 years ago, and I made a horrible mistake that cost me my life. I had been married to my husband, who was also my boyfriend at the time, for five years at the time of the incident. Both of us grew up in the same town and had many common friendships throughout our youth. In high school we were introduced to one another. Since then, we've been living together. In the years after college, though, I started to fear that my relationship was strangling my ability to express myself. Julia, my best friend, agreed with me completely. We'd go out drinking with our friends and leave our spouses at home. We had no intention of doing anything illegal, but it was exhilarating to know that other guys were keeping an eye on us. Never, ever experiment with fire, as the adage goes. The more we parted, the more Julia would want to cheat. At the end, she started having experiences with other guys in bars and nightclubs. And I'm sad to confess it, but I did the same thing for a few nights, dancing with guys and kissing them in the process. After experiencing a number of such instances, I made the decision to put an end to it. I was disgusted with myself, with her, with the strangers I was kissing, and most of all with myself for having betrayed the love of my life in such a public manner. I warned her that if she continued to cheat on me, I would no longer be able to socialize with her in the future. She became aware of what was taking on and put a stop to it. As a result, despite all of my moral fury, I was unable to get the courage to confess what I'd done, and so we decided to keep it a secret. Let's fast forward 20 years. So as a consequence, I ended up marrying that person, who is now my husband. We are the parents of four children, 18, 17, 14, 14. The dating environment for my best friend has almost vanished over the previous two decades and I blame him. She is the owner and operator of a successful business that she inherited from her family 
and she spends her whole life to it. Her social life consists mostly of spending time with me or my partner, as well as occasionally babysitting the children. It turns out that she has grown to be so close to my husband that one night in February of this year, she drank too much and ended up spilling the beans about our small adultery incidents from years before. The fact that I had only done it four times, kissing four different guys, went unmentioned by her. Understandably, she has no recollection of those specifics. All she recalls is that she cheated for more than a year and that I was doing the same thing. To make matters worse, she said it while my oldest child was upstairs and he was aware of what was going on. In the absence of myself and our three other children, who were visiting my parents for the weekend, my husband had to calm my son while simultaneously trying to make sense of what Julia was saying to him. I had no notion that the night I left would be the last time I would be kissed by the love of my life, and it was. As soon as I returned home the next day, my husband sat me down and asked me outright whether I had ever cheated on him. By the look in his eyes, I could tell he was well-versed on the subject. In my confession, I admitted to having done so. His calm demeanor took me completely by surprise. I was worried about how he was doing at the time. He's generally a proud and boisterous person, but on that particular day, he seemed to be quiet, detached from our relationship and far from me. Because our children are his, he told me that he wants to do a DNA test on all of them, which I gladly agreed to because they are his. He's the only man I've ever had contact with and he's the only one I'd recommend. We were waiting for the results of the tests for a week and my child did not want to see me throughout that time. When the results of the investigation were released, I assumed that we could finally begin to rebuild our trust foundation. With all of my resources at my disposal, I could dedicate all of my time and energy to our marriage and to demonstrating to my husband that I was worthy of his attention and devotion. The day after the results were announced, he alerted me that he wanted a divorce from me. Since March of this year, we haven't had any contact with one another. He has just completed the acquisition of an apartment in the center of our city's downtown area. He accepted exclusive responsibility for my older two children while my little twins shared their time between me and him. Mr. Smith is determined about not going to marriage counseling with his wife. Our jurisdiction has a six-month waiting period before a divorce may be finalized, which was finished. In October of this year, according to our records, on October 23rd, I will be 42 years old, divorced, and the mother of four children, two of whom despise me and the other three of whom blame me for the upheaval that has occurred in their lives. Juliet was no longer a significant part of my life. While I recognize that it wasn't her fault, that I made the choice to lie, and that I am ultimately responsible for the repercussions of my actions, I continue to hold her accountable for the devastation she has brought upon my life. No matter how illogical it seems, I hold it against her still. Apparently, one of my younger kids has discovered that Julia has been spending the night at my husband's apartment. Indignant at my sentiments of envy and hate for her, as well as at my feelings of misery over the whole scenario, I express my indignation in writing. I have a duty to bring him back to safety. This is not the manner in which our lives should come to an end. After putting in so much work into creating our house, he is unable to enjoy it with her while I suffer in the frigid weather outside. When I think of him being referred to as my ex-boyfriend, it makes me want to curl up and hide completely.